I take a question near the back. Yes, that's right, in the striped shirt. Yes. When you use the term Platonism, uh, you're talking about the view that I understand Plato himself held, right? That there are these abstract things that exist sort of independently in themselves. But then, as you as you say, Philo locates those within the Logos, within the mind of God. The entire what's normally called Christian Platonist tradition does this, right? So yes. even I think Plotinus in some sense did that, didn't he? So, so I mean, well, it, you're using the word Platonism for something that you say is opposed to Christian faith, but there is this very robust what's normally called Christian Platonist tradition, which would say that the, 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 there are the divine ideas which exist within God. Aquinas would say there it's God knowing himself as imitable by creatures. Uh, and, and I don't see you, maybe just because I'm a church historian, not a philosopher, I don't see you really engaging with that tradition uh, in ways that I can make sense of. All right, let's address this because this is important. I'm trying to, in my exegetical work, do a responsible exegesis of the historical and cultural background of the prologue to the fourth gospel as well as some of Paul's correspondence. And clearly the background to those is not to be found in later Neoplatonism like Plotinus, this is centuries later. It's to be found in this school called Middle Platonism that is represented by people like Philo. And I think it is this middle Platonism that forms the backdrop for much of the New Testament talk about God as the source of all being. And it was in Hellenistic Jewish thought, like Philo's, that the realm of Platonic objects was taken into the mind of God. And just as the mind of the architect conceives of the plan of the city before it is built, so God has this mental construct of the world on the basis of which then he constructs the physical world. And that tradition out of Philo, I think, is, is behind the New Testament. And then it does get explicitly picked up by people like Augustine. And so that was why I said Frege, remember, the 19th century philosopher had somehow overlooked this historic Christian position of divine conceptualism. That's what you're talking about. That's not Platonism. Uh, that's divine conceptualism where what were formerly thought to be abstract objects in a heavenly realm or a Platonic realm are now instead thought to be concepts or thoughts in the divine mind. So I, I definitely have addressed this area. That is divine conceptualism. I, I mean, I thought that, that was what you, you're referring to, divine conceptualism. I suppose your, your description of it, then you talk about objections to it. You know, you're talking about propositions, for instance, does God have these, these sort of verbal thoughts? Yes. Well, someone like Aquinas would say, well, you know, language, is human, it's our reflection of the divine mind. It's not that God is sort of linguistically thinking, right, these verbal expressions, but that all human language, all human names that we that we use are reflections of that which is one simple reality of God. So I guess we get into divine simplicity here, perhaps. Exactly. God. And that's your your objection is entirely warranted and just right. I am giving you the tip of the iceberg here tonight. I mean, you wouldn't believe how much I've had to cut to get this down to within an hour. Um, but I am interacting with the work of contemporary conceptualists like Greg Welty, who wrote under Swinburne here at Oxford, uh, who is a prominent contemporary conceptualist. Leftow kind of hints around at conceptualism, though I, I think, as I say in my review of his book, I think he's really a fictionalist, but he, he, he does use a lot of conceptualist moves. So I'm interacting with those folks, but certainly the, the neo-Thomist is at liberty to say, wait a minute, this talk of a divine, of a plurality of divine thoughts is just human uh, representation of the divine mind. In fact, the divine mind is simple, and there isn't a plurality of propositional thoughts on God's part. God is his essence, and his essence is simple, and, and therefore this problem won't arise. And so in dealing with a fuller discussion, obviously one is going to have to interact with that Thomistic tradition, absolutely.